No matter how good it was, activists nonetheless criticized Shogun for not featuring black people in feudal Japan, a rare act of historical accuracy in contemporary Hollywood. Contemporary Hollywood were quick to strike back though, because now a black samurai movie is coming. Announced on April 10th, Variety broke the scoop Warner Brothers lands Black Samurai movie from the color purple director Blitz Basavule. The story proper reads, in a competitive situation, Warner Brothers has landed the color purple director Blitz Basavule's next project, which takes on the legendary Yasuke, an African warrior who became the first black samurai. Sources tell Variety that Warner Brothers beat out three other studios and streamers bids on the script, tentatively titled Black Samurai. The movie has no doubt been in development for quite some time, but I wouldn't be surprised if the made-up controversy about there not being black people in Shogun gave this project that extra it factor to push it towards a green light. Indeed, all the keyboard social justice warriors clamoring for black representation in Shogun did indeed mention Yasuke as their justification, because he was a known historical figure, a black man in Japan, and a samurai to boot. Except he wasn't, that's a romanticized falsification of history. Even on Wikipedia, it is stated, Yasuke is regarded by some writers as Japan's first recorded foreign-born samurai, but notably, this depends on how one defines the word samurai. Allow me to translate that into non-bullshit that doesn't consider the feelings of activists hell-bent on rewriting history. In order for Yasuke to be a samurai, you'd have to radically alter the definition of what it means to be a samurai. Meaning, if you don't change the definition specifically so that he may be included in it, Yasuke was no samurai. The website Way of Bushido certainly takes this point of view, titling their 2021 deep dive The Bogus Story of Yasuke and Wokeness Revisionist History. They really do a deep dive into the various historic records here, as well as later interpretations of them. But here is the important conclusion, which is stated up front. We'll begin with the fact that Yasuke was a real person. He did exist. He was of African descent, and he was put into the service of Oda Nobunaga. This is fact and is not disputed. What is disputed are all the revisionist stories of Yasuke as a great warrior, as having been awarded samurai status, and earning respect of the Japanese people and other daimyo that he encountered in the service of Oda. This is not fact. Romantic stories of the famed black samurai are nothing more than fables no more real than the futuristic comic book land of Wakanda. Recent books by authors such as Thomas Lockley provide a plethora of speculation portrayed as fact, typically referencing historical documents and then interpreting them in a way to fit the narrative that sells books. So, now that we know that Yasuke wasn't really a samurai, let's return to Variety and their write-up. After impressing the industry with his 2018 debut The Burial of Kojo, helming episodes of Ava DuVernay's Cherish the Day, and working with Beyoncé on her feature-length visual album Black is King, Basa Wule made his major studio debut with 2023's remake of The Color Purple. The Ghanaian filmmaker who brought his unique visual language to the Oprah Winfrey and Steven Spielberg produced musical movie is said to have done the same with his take on Yasuke, an African warrior who served under Japanese daimyo Oda Nobunaga during the Sengoku period of samurai conflict in 16th century Japan. And here's the important bit. Instead of a traditional biopic, the film invokes shades of 300 and Mad Max. Exact plot points are still under wraps. In other words, they will be taking some historic liberties here, because if they were to make a traditional biopic, one which even tried to be somewhat true to documented history, then the activists might not have been too pleased with the finished movie. That then invites the question, what kind of liberties will be taken? 
liberties of the kind where the main and overarching beats and events unfold in accordance with known history, and only character interactions and relations have been dramatized in order to create the character arcs, narrative beats, and subtextual themes which must be present in two hour feature films. This is what most historical adaptations do, and that is perfectly fine. Or are we talking about liberties of the kind where the historical events themselves have been rewritten, maybe even completely subverted because it fits a contemporary agenda? One of the more recent and infamous examples of this is The Woman King, the brainchild of social justice activist, producer and former actress Maria Bello and social justice activist and writer Dana Stevens. Rather than tell a genuine African story with a woman king, these two white women chose to tell a female empowerment fantasy in which the all-good Dahomey women were forced to do evil things by the Dahomey men, who, like every other man on earth, was evil. Viola Davis' character, storyline, and character arc was 100% fiction, and set against the backdrop of a highly sanitized version of the Dahomey tribe and an oversimplified, to the point of historic falsification look at the Atlantic slave trade. And yet, the Woman King was presented as an authentic story, proclaimed to be based on real events. But to the studio's dismay, it was rightfully called out for its insidious lies and manipulation by the black community. Now, I am not making the claim that the black samurai is going to be another woman king. It's way too early to make that call, and I hope it won't go that direction. And it doesn't have to do that, because there's a way to get it both ways here. If, indeed, the movie takes the romanticized view of Yasuke as a samurai who won the respect, hearts, and minds of the Japanese, <laughs> then I hope they at the very least will go all the way, like Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained, or The Inglorious Bastards, or even The King's Man, all of which made it clear they were dealing with alternate history and made to entertain. If the Black Samurai can do that, then best of luck to it. I hope it'll be awesome. So, do you think it can find that balance? Or are we looking at the next Woman King here? Let me know in the comments.